Hey now everybody, Jamie here, and today I'm going to be taking a look at this absolutely gorgeous, fabulous, wonderful book, Neverland, a fantasy role-playing setting that is 5e compatible. Now, it says 5e compatible, that means it works with Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition rule set. Now, of course, this is a campaign setting book, so you can use any system you want with this thing. It's just all the stat blocks and numbers and things are based on the 5th edition rule set. Uh, so ignore all that if you want to make your own monsters and use your own system. This is really about all the awesome content for the setting of Neverland. So of course, we have Neverland here. This is Peter Pan, right? Now, I've never read the original Peter Pan stories, but I've seen the Disney movie many, many times. And you may initially come right out and say, wait a minute, this is like, this looks like kid stuff. Well, let me tell you this. It is kid stuff, but it is also adult stuff. You could make this setting anything you want it to be. It's fabulous. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to pop open the book here. The first thing the book does is kind of give you an overview of all of what's going on in Neverland at this point. Now, you have to realize that this is not in the same time period as the original stories or the movie or any of that stuff. This is many years later. So a lot of these factions have changed over time and become something slightly different. It gives us an overview of each one of these various what I'll call factions. You know, we got Peter Pan and the Lost Boys. They're pretty much what you'd expect from the movies. They're not changed a lot. But you have Captain Hook here, which is they're very different. It's actually cool what's happened to these guys. All of the pirates are essentially undead at this point. In the daytime, they're bones. They're just dusty bones laying on the ground, and they have to find places to hide themselves because at night they come back to life and they're like they were when they were younger. And in the morning, they go back to bones again. So they have to find these cool places to hide themselves so that they're safe in the daytime. Of course, we have the mermaids here. And the mermaids uh, are apparently like traders and merchants. And they're kind of like this, you know, secretly these traders and merchants that work with all the different factions in the world. We have the, the spiders, which are in league with the pirates. And apparently they have secrets that they are trying to take over certain areas of the world. And they're working with the pirates, but they might double cross them at some point. We have the fairies from the world of L fame. And that's a whole different world that you can get to via portals around the Neverland Island. And there's a whole situation there with them stealing children that Peter Pan bring from the real world. There's so much great stuff here. We got gnomes and giants and we have giant bugs and we have, of course, the crocodile, the crocodile TikTok, as he's called in the movie. He is immense in this game. He is Godzilla sized. And it's actually funny. He's so big that they actually have a map of the inside of the crocodile. In case you get eaten, you can have an adventure inside the crocodile trying to get out. Man, that is just absolutely awesome. I love that about this game. One of my favorite parts of this book is this section that talks about basically the workings of the island. You have like a travel section, you have a time section, like travel, for example, some characters can fly and they have these hollow trees all over the island that the Lost Boys use to get around quickly. So you can kind of go in at the hollow tree, get into this underground network and pop out somewhere else on the island. Uh, you have all these different locations that you can deal with. I love this idea of the sort of managing the, the day cycle, the, the hourly cycle of the island and the, the hours of this, the island kind of reflect what the crocodile is doing. Like the crocodile is resting at a certain point. He's patrolling at a certain point. He's uh, sunning himself at a certain point. And it shows you exactly where he is on the island. So you can look out for him. It talks about when hours change, there's this weird chime that happens that everybody that's audible all over the island. So it, it adds this really cool mystical thing to the setting that a lot of straight campaign settings don't have. It makes this one feel so, so unique and different than everything else. Now, as you can see, kind of flipping through the book here, uh, the style of the book is a very, it feels like a 1960s, you know, child's storybook in a way. And it's beautiful because of that. The art style that they chose here is great. And that might actually lead you to think that this is for children. And yes, you could easily play this with children, depending on the types of adventures you would write to, to go through this game. But this could very easily be an adult game, too, because you, there's some serious stuff here. There's some crazy monsters. They have a whole section here of monsters. I mean, it's a big chunk of the book. They call it the cast. And it's got tons and tons of monsters in here and various weird creatures, weird non-player characters that you can meet and talk to. Uh, and they're just all odd. And that's what makes this game exciting because it's not your standard Dungeons and Dragons Tolkien style fantasy. 
This is its own deal. And it's very storybook like, but there's some dark stuff in here too. That is just absolutely cool. Now, something that's important about this game that I wanted to point out that actually makes this book, this is one of the features of this book that I think is wonderful. Now, for those of you who are not uh, privy to a lot of the role-playing game, you know, verbiage and, and weird words and buzzwords that they throw out there, this game is called a hex crawl. Now, they have a whole section here, which is a map of the island that's all broken down in hexagons. And each one of those hexagons is marked with a number and a name. Each one of those numbers corresponds to a page in the book. Like number one is the peninsula. Number two is the, the beach caves. Uh, we have number three is the mermaid cove. And how this works is say you're at a certain location and you need to get to another location. You look at that other location and you see all the hexes that are in between here and there. And that is your traveling. And that is your adventure getting there. Each one of those hexes you go into, you look over the, the book here, you see what the situation is. You get tables for uh, different creatures you'll find there, different non-player characters you'll find there, different weird area effects and encounters that you might have. And you just start winging it. You could just wing it off of one of these single pages. And that's like, you know, maybe four or five little adventures that you have while you try to get where you're going. The entire island is flushed out here in this. It's, it's absolutely cool how this works. And of course, uh, the back of the book is a chapter called Resources, which has an absolute immense amount of awesome maps of all the different key locations around Neverland and all the different tables and, and uh, you know, information about the things you'll find there and the, the rooms that you go through and stuff. So this thing is like a complete, complete campaign setting for this cool island that is just absolutely insane to go through. There are so many different adventures. You could play a one-off adventure in Neverland and then you get out, or you could run an entire campaign that just takes place on this one small island, bouncing back and forth between this island and Elfame, the fairy land. You could be fighting the pirates. You could be fighting the spiders. You could be fighting the mermaids if you want to fight them. You could get in tr trouble with the Lost Boys. You could join the Lost Boys if you want. There's just so much potential here with this game and the product is put together in such a fabulous way. It's everything about it. Artwork is so evocative of the theme. Uh, every little piece of information just gives you more and more window dressing to throw into a campaign that is just great. I got to tell you, this is one of this is one of the best books I bought in so long and it is just wonderful. Uh, you know, I can't say enough about it. I, I highly recommend that you pick up Neverland, a fantasy role-playing setting from Andrew Kolb. This guy did a fantastic job here. You're playing Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition, you got it, you're good. You're playing any other system, you could just adapt it to the best of your ability. Wonderful product, go check it out, Neverland. Thanks so much, everybody. If you've enjoyed this video, please do us a giant favor by subscribing to the channel and clicking that wacky bell icon. If you're into board games, miniatures games, role-playing games, we have a bunch of audio podcasts you might enjoy. You can find those at thesecretcabal.com or on iTunes and Stitcher.